Welcome to War Games on Toast, all of you lovely people. I am once again back talking about the latest edition of Warcry, and I am, of course, back talking about a new faction. Today, I am talking about the sneakiest gets in all of Warcry. I am talking about one of the compendium factions, and of course, I am talking about the crumpingly crazy Cruel Boys. But before we get into all that, please consider supporting your local bakery and giving your favourite gluten-filled advisor a like, a comment and a subscribe. It really helps me get my content out to new Warcry players and more importantly, it helps me fight against that dastardly YouTube algorithm demon who needs a good old killing. And no one has successfully managed to guess what this yellow blur is over to my right, your left, I think. First person to do that will get a cookie and if no one gets that, then there will be a mysterious yellow blur reveal at 1000 subscribers but with all that out of the way and now for something completely different before we talk about what the cruel boys do we really need to talk about who the cruel boys are and let me tell you right now the cruel boys are bizarre even by auric standards instead of being burly brutal and itching for a fight Cruel boys are lanky, cunning, and, well, itching for a fight. Devout followers of Mork, these chaps skulk around in swamps and make use of vicious weaponry, deadly venoms, and devious machina. Rarely will a foe face a single cruel boy, for where there is one in the open, many more are likely lying in wait. Cruel boys are a fascinating take on it, the typically brutish oryx that have pervaded the species since the dawn of time. What they lack in brawn, they more than make up for in brain, and their range is one of the nicer ones and more modern ones when looking at the Greater Destruction Grand Alliance. When it comes to pros and cons, you're looking at tough infantry. If you like bulky troops, then cruel boys, despite their lanky frames, are shockingly resilient and are ideal for holding any line. Your basic troops roll in with 15 wounds, toughness 4, and they are very cheap. Not only that, crew boys have an excellent selection of allies and thralls to pick from and recently have even gained access to some very good bladeborne units. Destruction has some of the best thralls and allies in general across the entire game. We're talking about Trogoths, Mega Bosses from Iron Jaws, Brute Bosses also from, from Iron Jaws, Bounder Bosses from the Gloomspite Gits and the Gobapalooza, all of which can be used to great effect within Cruel Boys. They also have very cheap chaff. They have access to some of the cheapest models in all of Warcry and this lets you dictate the order of play as you can just flood the board with nothing units and just wait, burning your opponent's activations and taking control of the game. And finally, if you love buffs and debuffs, then you have that in droves with cool boys because you have abilities that can increase your damage, but not only that, you have abilities that can decrease the damage output of your opponents and even remove them from objectives if you bring in allies very powerful selection of abilities on display here and it really makes the cruel boys tick but of course for every pro there is a con and cruel boys are no exception and the first and most obvious con to me is their fairly small range of models in the dedicated cruel boys faction this is mostly down to them being a newer faction and also because in Age of Sigma, there's been a massive push towards war machines, giant monsters and characters, none of which have transferred over to Warcry, which is a bit of a shame. Not only that, despite their very small selection of units, there is a shocking amount of redundancy within this. This is common in all compendium lists, but seeing it in a faction this small is sad to see. There are just too many options that aren't worth taking or don't fit the faction at all in Warcry or are simply outclassed by similar things within the faction. Uh, next up, we have their low damage output. Despite being Oryx, crew boys can struggle to deal damage due to their generally poor offensive stats. We mentioned that they have fantastic durability thanks to the base Guttripper having 15 wounds and toughness 4 but 
that trade-off is their damage which is very very poor and it's quite difficult to increase it to anything worth writing home about there are some exceptions to this rule but your basic guys are not going to do much and you don't have elite guys so you really are stuck there and our final con is dabbling out of faction is almost a requirement sure you can run a pure cruel boys list but you might find yourself struggling since a lot of power in cruel boys comes from other places and with the pros and cons out of the way, we can dive into what makes the crew boys tick. We are going to start with the reaction, and this bad lad can be used by anybody in the faction. It is a reaction called Cunning Traps, and it reads, A fighter can make this reaction after an enemy fighter finishes a move action visible to this fighter and within three inches of this fighter. Pick another friendly fighter within 3 inches of this fighter. That fighter then makes a bonus attack action that must target the enemy fighter that made the move action. Now this reaction is very wordy and it's a little bit hard to read on your first pass through but this reaction is outstanding and unlike many faction specific reactions, crew boys really want to use this and I mean they want to use this a lot basically you want to keep your lads in groups of at least two ideally having chaff units supporting a beat stick in short once an enemy moves close to your chaff your chaff reacts you then pick a beefy bloke nearby to smack the enemy that moved close providing you are in range to do so the wording in this reaction is also very specific too. Whilst only a Cruel Boys unit can activate the reaction, any fighter can be picked to attack as a result of this reaction. This means you can have a basic Auroch point to an ally or a thrall. Cruel Boys rune be damned. You will literally trade the actions of a crappy unit to allow a much better unit to do more per turn. In the right scenario, this reaction is staggeringly good. The downside is that enemies can play around it, so you might not be able to pull off the shenanigans you want, but with careful planning and positioning, you can almost force your opponent to play into your reaction. Remember, if you stand your guys on an objective, on the far edges of the objective, if they want to claim the objective off you, they're forced to move next to you. Okay, they're forced to get within your one inch range and they're forced to get clobbered by your big guy. So bear that in mind, there's a lot of play here, but it's all down to positioning and your formations of your guys. In general, this might seem odd, you want your beat stick up front and you want your chaff behind at the very least you want them in line with each other that way you know your beat stick is going to be in range and before i forget you can also use this to make ranged units fire at approaching enemies there are some issues with this and that is that all range weapons that we have access to have prohibitively restrictive minimum range requirements it's so restrictive in fact that some of our units simply can't fire at all which is a little bit naff so working together as a team is what makes Cruel Boys tick. But there is one other defining feature of these swampy lads and that is poisons and venoms. This ability can be used by almost everything. The only restrictions that I can see are that being grots can't use it. So any kind of grot, so hob grots, pot grots, stab grots, none. They can't use this at all. This is an Auroch only ability and it does the following. Is a double and it is called Venom Encrusted Weapons. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add one to the damage points allocated to enemy fighters by each hit and critical hit from attack actions made by this fighter. First things first, this ability is directly competing with Onslaught. So before we go any further, is it worth using this ability over Onslaught? And the answer is yes but it's more situational than you might think. So on a regular Cruel Boy, on a Gut Ripper, no. The damage output on average favors Onslaught 
if my maths are correct. It's not by much, but statistically you are better off slightly by using Onslaught on basic dudes. Things get interesting when you apply it to one of our more killer units, such as the killer boss. These guys actually do slightly more damage with Venom and Crystal Weapons than they do with Onslaught. Again, it is very slight, but the stats are on your side, if only slightly. Where Venom shines is when an enemy is reducing damage, say Iron Golems or Beasts of Chaos. In this instance, on a killer boss, Venom works wonders and the damage boost is statistically more noticeable. In short, don't bother using this on basic troops, ever really. Do use this on any unit that has a minimum damage of two, however, and absolutely use this if your opponent is at risk of reacting with some damage reduction. Remember as well that Venom Encrusted Weapons works until the end of your activation. So if you are stationary, you can throw out two attack actions and get the benefits of Venom both times. If your opponent wants to nerf your damage, they are forced to react twice, ending that unit's turn before it even starts and that in and of itself makes Venom very, very useful. And the final ability I want to talk about as a separate section is their unique quad called Cunning Attack, which can be triggered by any Cruel Boys leader. A fighter can use this ability only if there are more friendly fighters with the warrior rune mark within six inches of this fighter than there are enemy fighters within six inches of this fighter. Those friendly fighters can each make a bonus move or a bonus melee attack action and each fighter can pick a different option. This ability sounds great on paper but it's a little bit naff in some areas in execution. In terms of damage it's simply awful in most cases simply because cruel boys don't deal that much damage within their own faction and the limitations of the buff prevent allies and thralls from benefiting at all. This makes the attack portion kind of moot but the move part however is actually very good. If you can get three, four, five units benefiting from a move action, that is a lot of mobility that can be pulled out of your butt on a dime. If you want more raw damage, just use Rampage on a killer boss or on a mega boss or on literally anything. For utility though, this quad is actually really funky because that those move shenanigans can win games. You can get a lot of guys moving very quickly out of nowhere. But now that we have all the generic stuff sorted, we're going to break down the units in Cruel Boys bit by bit, starting with the leaders and then moving on to their fighters. Do you know I'm going to try, try being the operative word, to keep each entry as brief as I can so you aren't here all day listening to me ramble. And we start off with the killer boss on Great Nashtooth. This guy comes in with a defensive profile of movement 8, toughness 5 and 38 wounds. He's a beefy boy with a lot of speed on his profile and this is backed up with a very nice offensive package of range 1, attacks 5, strength 4, damage 3, 5. This guy is our strongest and most durable base unit. He hits very hard, can get where you need him to and he can take a beating thanks to his monstrous toughness 5 and 38 wounds. He also has a unique double that can spike his damage against just about anything in the game. We are talking up to 9 damage, toughness be damned, before you even use your basic attacks. Very, very nasty. Sadly, the downsides really hinder this guy to the point of irrelevance. First, he is mounted, so he can't navigate the board as well as most units. Not only that, this model is massive both in terms of height and width and once again this makes moving him around the board way more difficult than it should be. Finally, at 330 points, he's expensive. Very expensive. I would much rather take more bodies that can move around without colliding with every piece of terrain imaginable. As a general rule, if you can move this guy around easily in a game of Warcry, you aren't using enough terrain. 
it's that simple. If you can move him, you aren't playing Warcry correctly. <laughs> but if the big guy isn't worth it, does that make the rest of the killer bosses bad? Not at all. Killer bosses come in two variations, one with a flail and one with a shield. The shield guy gets toughness 5, whilst the flail guy gets plus 1 attack and plus 1 crit. Of the two, I really like the double weapon guy, the guy with the flail, because he is quite the beat stick as his profile is 5 attacks, strength 4, damage 2, 5. Not only that, he can take a beating 2 thanks to his base toughness 4 and wounds of 28. He is even reasonably priced at only 190 points. Throw Onslaught or Venom on this guy and he's doing a lot of work. Surround him with chaff and watch as he throws out a devastating barrage of attacks as enemies start to close in. Sure, he's only strength 4, but when he's attacking 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times extra a turn potentially, he's going to put a lot of damage on a lot of things. And if those things are toughness 3 or toughness 4, he's going to land some seriously heavy hits. And that's before he even gets to attack himself, where he'll be getting an additional 10 attacks. So yeah, the killer boss on foot is very good. He also has a dedicated double, but it kind of sucks. It's more of a meme. Uh, you'll very rarely use it since it interacts with the stab grot, who is the worst of the two grots we can take. And using dice to make the stab grot stab someone isn't that good of an investment when you could just use that to make the killer boss stab someone instead. Um, it also has a movement portion which can be used to sneak around and get objectives but frankly i don't bring the stab got all that often and that means i don't get to use this ability all that being said though the killer boss is my go-to leader and he has always done work next up we have the merc knob with belcher banner this guy is a weaker and softer killer boss for a discounted price he's fine but the reduction in stats is a bit of a hard ask when the reduction in price isn't that great his biggest strength is in his banner which does the following for a triple roll a dice for each visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter on a roll of a three or four allocate one point of damage to the fighter being rolled for on a roll of a five plus allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability this ability can be very powerful if used at the right time against the right units and with the right dice basically it's not reliable in the slightest sure you could spike a whole bunch of six damage hits to ignore toughness values but the stars really have to align for that however if the meta ever gets super heavy on large hordes of infantry then this guy could do some very interesting things even if he's just chipping one damage away from time to time on a large scale and let's be honest how many times have you left an enemy on one hp in warcry it happens all the time it's almost like the maths has been designed to screw you over just a little bit and guess what this guy, the Merc Knob, can roll in and kill them all very reliably with his banner. Right now though, he's a little bit too easy to play around and he's a little bit too expensive for what he offers if his ability isn't getting use. He's very good. I can see this guy doing a lot of work, but there will be games where the Merc Knob does absolutely nothing and he is not cheap enough to do absolutely nothing. And the last of our unique leaders is the Swamp Caller Shaman. This is your basic wizard model. He's actually just as tough as the Merc Knob, has your standard 3 6 damage range attack, and he's not too expensive to field, all things considered. Statistically, he's okay. In direct competition with the Merc Knob, I would take this guy almost every single time. Things get even more interesting when you start throwing in his ability, Summon the Boggy Mist. For a triple, you can create a minus one attack aura that naturally only affects your enemies. This ability is very strong and since you want your guys to be somewhat clumped together to make use of cunning traps, you can cover a lot of models with this ability. 
making your guys noticeably harder to kill and they were already pretty tough as we will soon find out and as we've already mentioned he is 165 points but i often find myself taking him regardless because like the killer boss this guy does work and the last two leaders are your more generic leaders these are the sergeants that lead regular units in age of sigma and we're going to start with the gut ripper boss like killer bosses the gut ripper boss comes in two variations they have the shield and the spear and they also have the two melee weapon variant i would very rarely if ever take these guys because they are simply too expensive for what they bring to the table they are the cost of a merc knob and they have worse stats and they don't come with that sexy banner if you are desperately low on points and have to make sacrifices then maybe take the double weapon gut ripper boss because he's just a, a bit of a downgraded killer boss but overall these guys are pretty underwhelming i'd rather just stretch to a killer boss or a shaman or failing that just take a merc knob and the final leader is the bolt boy boss this guy is a bit of a trap depending on the format bolt boys are not that great in warcry because they're very unreliable if you're running with twists you will find that a good chunk of those twists basically shut down range units and if you shut down range units for even a single turn then the bolt boy boss is doing nothing he has a minimum range of six inches to fire so by the time you can fire things could literally be in your face and then you can't do anything and he's a waste he's a waste of points he's also 170 points which is almost as much as a killer boss and more expensive than the shaman where he gets interesting is in his surprisingly decent damage output but only on the bolt boy boss so this guy has three attacks strength for one four damage that one four damage on the spike of the crit is very nice and this combos with his ability called aimed shot the next shot he fires crits on a four plus now when you're rolling three dice critting on a four plus is averaging out four to eight damage now if you spike that that's 12 damage which is if you hit for eight that's killing chaff if you hit for 12 you're killing more frontline slightly more elite troops with your first shot and don't forget that was only with your first volley you can attack a second time which does not get the benefit of aim shot there's still the potential there of getting between another three and another 12 damage off with his other shot so the amount of damage you can do with a bolt boy boss is quite high but he's expensive he also requires constant dice investment to do anything and depending on format you just might not be able to do anything with them i've had multiple games of um war crime running twists and i've had the bolt boy boss just sit around doing nothing you'd be amazed at how many twists are a giant disadvantage specifically arranged and the bolt boys do not do well in that scenario if you aren't running twists bolt boy boss get him on a on a high ledge and just fire down this guy can be great but again it's all about format with this guy he's either very very handy or a complete trap now the leaders are out the way we're going to talk about the lads and we're going to start out with the gut rippers these guys come in two flavors spears or not spears of the two spears are simply better spears have more range and a higher crit whereas the not spears get plus one attack which is fine but frankly the damage output on the not spears is not high enough to justify losing that range too gut rippers are amazing though they are the beating heart of cruel boys and you want a lot of them why their defensive stats for a piddly 75 points 75 points you get movement four toughness four and 15 wounds that is a monstrous stat line for the cost they move fairly fast they have great toughness and they have way more wounds than i think any other model at this price range they are ludicrously resilient and only get harder to kill when you throw a shaman in nearby gut rippers with spears only have two attacks at strength three which is where they fall a bit flat 
but that's where reactions like reposts come into play since you don't care if you can't attack. Burn those AP all day, every day and of course they can also make use of the wonderful cunning trap and become fodder that allows your killer bosses to get free attack actions over and over and over again. There is literally nothing to dislike here. They are stupendous. They are my favorite unit in Warcry by far. I love these guys and I take a minimum of five in every single list I run. I love these guys. Sadly, the same cannot be said for Bolt Boys. Imagine a Bolt Boy boss, but significantly worse. They do have access to aim shot, but they also only have two shots per action and that is a substantial downgrade you're going from averaging eight damage with aim shot to averaging four and that ain't great so yeah bolt boys they're expensive and they're bad and they have all the downsides of the bolt boy boss and do not bring any upside never take a basic bolt boy if you want a giant crossbow wielding dude always take the boss never skimp never ever skimp and next up we have the hobgrots and their hobgrot boss these guys are actually very interesting because they get a ton of attacks like four attacks a model they can be boosted by a nearby hobgrot boss to get even more attacks and honestly when boosted again by onslaught they do surprisingly well when it comes to crit fishing as they're throwing out six to twelve attacks per turn they can't use Venom Inquisitor weapons, but that doesn't really matter. They also have access to a very nice ranged attack that does 2-4 damage at strength 4 and it can absolutely be used with Cunning Trap to deal great damage. All of this makes them interesting. The thing is, these guys come in at 70 points or 75 points for the boss. That is go trip our territory and these guys are far less survivable at only toughness three and eight wounds they are going to fall down like a house of cards no matter what you do that being said i sometimes run a few hop gods here and there as cunning trap targets why because enemies like to stand outside of your range they'll move close to your units but won't get within range of your killer bosses or your your allies so they can't attack so they're being a bit cagey with their movements you can't be cagey with hobgrots because they'll throw their grenades and do decent damage it's only two attacks per throw but it's two four damage at strength four it is surprisingly reliable especially against toughness three and toughness four units it allows you to reach out and punish enemies when they think they're safe i often place a single hobgrot in my gut ripper ball i'll place them slightly behind them as opposed to being in front or beside a killer boss this lets you control a little bit more space than you would otherwise as they have a five inch range they're interesting they're okay but honestly they are always the first thing i like to cut when i'm making my lists so i don't often bring them and finally we get to the uber chaff of cruel boys the stab grots and the pot grots these guys are 45 points a pop, have toughness 3 or toughness 4 respectively, and rock in with a whopping 6 wounds. They are super squishy, but they are also super cheap. They are added to your list to burn your opponent's activations. Simply use wait twice to force your opponent to reveal their plans, and then you can move to counter. These are very cheap, but don't expect them to do much other than hide, die, wait, or stand on objectives. Of the two, I vastly prefer the Potgrot because despite having less toughness, this guy can also heal friendly fighters on a triple. You can heal up to 18 wounds if you are supremely lucky, giving the Potgrot a lot more value on the tabletop than the Stabgrot. And that's it. That's the faction. Very small, but it comes with a very clear game plan. And unlike our other getting started, we aren't going to stop there no 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 we are going to go deeper and now bring up some of the extra units they can bring in the thrall ally and blade board section because things get really interesting when you start putting these guys in 
and we are going to start with the thralls first and of the two thralls we have access to the rot gut trogoth is by far the best a 185 points you get toughness 5 and 28 wounds this guy is a beast of a model that also comes with three strength five three six damage attacks he is cheap as chips and deals a lot of damage again remember and i will drill this into your brain you can use cunning trap to get him to attack over and over and over again that is a lot of damage on a cheap and durable frame not to mention trogoths themselves can react to reduce the attacks of enemies by one and can even use a double to regenerate hp they are stupidly good and honestly when i'm feeling a little bit spicy a little bit fruity i'll take two the only thing stopping me from spamming out as many trogoths as i possibly can is the mega boss and brute boss allies rolling in from the mighty iron jaws if you want even more killy and even more tank you always go to iron jaws for elites and the mega boss and brute boss are a great addition to any list starting with the mega boss this guy is toughness 5 with 35 wounds making him stupidly hard to kill not only that he comes with three strength six four eight damage attacks that say it with me can be used with cunning trap he is only movement three however so you may have to spend dice on rush or his own ability charge to get around the board more effectively he's very good at killing and he's only 225 points for a model that can scrap and possibly take down monsters the brute boss on the other hand is basically a smaller mega boss they do less damage have less wounds but have access to a very nice ability called Umesson, which is the triple which allows you to prevent enemies from counting towards holding objectives if those enemies have less than 14 wounds this ability is game changingly good especially when you consider you have a lot of objective control thanks to your horde of cheap gut rippers that are flooding the field this guy is only 190 to 195 points based on flavor and they are both great then we have the brewkit who comes as part of the gobapalooza this guy is as squishy as they come but he also comes in at only 70 points and an ability that boosts a fighter's attack value by three on their next attack action boosts it by three imagine this on a mega boss it is ridiculous ridiculous if you want to get really silly you would even activate the brew gate, use its ability to put a model and then wait activate the brew gate again use its ability and then wait again you now have a model with plus six attacks which can also be buffed in its own activation with onslaught imagine a mega boss attacking with two attack actions with 14 attacks strength six four eight damage 14 attacks with that profile is unbelievably good you could even trigger the potion effect on a cunning trap attack as well which is just silly to think about a total chad of a force multiplier as you can see cruel boys whilst lacking punch themselves have access to some seriously threatening additions the fact that cruel boys can bring the full might of destruction to bear you really can't complain incidentally cruel boys being brought in as allies is also very good for other destruction factions as you can have them using cunning trap in any list which is stupidly good it's very symbiotic and i love it and don't forget ogres are destruction too so feel free to bring tyrants and the like if you want even more push and bladeborn recently there's been bladeborn factions added to destruction and this lets you take things like shank who is a 55 point model who brings nets and doesn't take up an ally slot there's so much good stuff here it's hard to decide who makes the cut but that is where i come into play and i have whipped up an example list that should get you started on your cruel boys journey first things first we are going to start with the leader and this is the killer boss with the flail next up we have fighters and we have not one not two but six good rippers with spears 
followed by Shank and a Pot Grot. Finally, we round out this list with our allies and we bring a Brugit and a Brute Boss with Boss Chopper. This list comes in at exactly 1000 points on your Swamp Infested Schnoz. This is a super basic list that doesn't require much to get going if you're willing to troll eBay. You could even drop things like the Brute Boss and replace it with another Killer Boss and wiggle some points here and there to just run Cruel Boys. Although I do think this ally soup list is pretty solid for a starting warband. So when playing this list, you know the drill. You want to keep your guys in tight knit groups. I like running gut repairs in groups of two. One unit will push an objective, another will push a different one, and the final is my flex. The other go one way or the other, or even just stay back on objective. Each group of gut rippers wants to have something special running with them. Ideally, you want Shank plus the killer boss running with one group or two gut rippers, the brute boss plus the brugit chilling with another group of good rippers, and finally, you want the pot grot and the final group of good rippers doing all kinds of sneaky things, maybe staying back on objectives, maybe flexing out, maybe even sending that pot got out on its own to rendezvous with other units to pass off its healing or just hide entirely up to you. This list is very easy to run. It works well without using cunning trap shenanigans and it works even better if you roll with the idea in mind. You have a lot of bodies on the field and you have a staggering number of wounds thanks to the 15 wounds a pop on those gut rippers and you just love to play the objective against other spammy lists you should do well since your horde is often far tougher and should be far killier thanks to cunning trap in a direct kill off you should also be kind of okay because your infantry is just that tough and cunning trap combined with repost will let you do serious work no matter how tough that enemy may be have fun and tweak this list to your heart's content this is a great jumping off point and this is the list i run all the time when i just want to whip together a quick warband and have some fun in conclusion cruel boys are sat on less so now as time goes on people are starting to sort of like click and go wow cruel boys they have some really good units and they're starting to become more prevalent but they're still a little bit on the niche side they have a lot of power despite their small pool of units their biggest strength comes from their access to the entirety of the destruction faction in addition to their reaction cunning trap i have a lot of fun running these guys and i consider them to be one of the better compendium factions both in terms of power but also in ease of learning to play many compendium factions are bloated where cruel boys feels very refined maybe a bit too refined but that just makes them easier to pass and easier to learn but that's the end of the video if you made it this far you're an absolute legend please consider supporting your local bakery and drop on your boy toast a like a comment and a subscribe let me know in the comments below what you think of cruel boys have i missed something do you use cunning trap do you not use cunning trap is there something i completely missed and you need to tell me then let me know because i will be happy to learn from your experiences and then we all get better as players as a little war games on toast war cry community but until next time lads ladies and everybody in between and beyond i will see you in the next video. Hurrah.